Hey guys, it's Jeremy with Lock Engineering again. I uh, just want to take a few minutes and show you um, a breakdown of the configuration manager in WeSim version 20. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Open up WeSim here. And when you guys open up WeSim, you're pretty familiar to this. When you do a file open, this screen pops up and say you pick a DXF. Yeah, you pick your machine. Okay, you pick your tool setup, you pick your material, and you pick your layer setup. The configuration manager is where all this information is stored and where you can change all that information. So for example, I'll go ahead and show you what happens. You guys all know what happens when you click open. It brings your part in, it tools it up, and from here you can add lead ins and code it or nest it at this point. Um, the configuration manager has a lot of different variables you can add to it. Um, for instance, in this configuration I have here just for a burner for a plasma or an oxy fuel cutter. Um, you got a breakdown of the burner here. Then under here is your machine settings. Uh, it give you, gives you all your limitations, your max material widths and thicknesses, your tolerances. Um, you can even put in table graphics in the new version. Um, these are your stations. For your machine, these are all variable. Um, this is primarily set up for a, a dying torch machine where you have one, two, and three stations. Then you have your tool setup. This is where most of you guys get confused for the most part. I'm going to show you just on the 60 amp here. Okay, as you can see here, I've got it set up for a scribe, <clears throat> a pneumatic scribe for the machine that it came with, and my burner. Um, in the available tooling here is where you can change your burner turf. Uh, for instance, on half inch plate you might have a 135 diameter burner instead of a 0.065 diameter burner just because of your amperage and how fast you're on your plasma and those sort of variables. Um, but in here you can you can edit your tools, say if you, you can change the tool color to where you bring in a part on the screen and the tool layer will show up a different color. Um, get your description here to tell you what exactly it is. Then you have a, a variable here for your curve. And you just plug in your curve there. And for your machines, your fire station size will be zero for pretty much all of your tools. Um, under your layer setups, close out of this, go back in here. Your layer setups is where you tell your it's where you tell Weeson where your geometry is going to be on your CAD files when you bring them in. Um, under your global information here, um, sharp angle usually always stays at 60, and then you have some tolerances here you can change. Your clean tolerance um, tells the software how much it wants to clean the part up. Your gap tolerance tells it. If there's a tiny gap between line segments, how much of that gap do you want us to, do you want WeSim to automatically go in and connect? Then you have your filter tolerance, which will filter out any kind of garbage you have left in your files here. Here's another thing that you guys ask a lot of questions about. Um, the restrict offset. Basically what that means is if you set that to true, like I have mine set is if you bring in a single line, for instance, if you have a single line inside of a square, instead of it being your curve being offset like it is here, your line would be ran center line instead of offsetting the curve. You know, a lot of you guys ask questions about that, so that's the trick to that. As long as your restrict offset set to true, it'll, it'll automatically run single lines as center line cuts. This is where you set up your layers. Um, for instance, here, everything that I draw in my CAD program on layer zero is going to be burned. So I set my color of my burner here, and I, the station here is going to be my burner, of course. Your cut direction, I've got set to auto, and cut side is left. That tells it to always offset my tool the right way. Um, just simple breakdown of that. On layer one here, Everything that I bring in, I want it to be scribed. So 
for instance, if I wanted to cut out a rectangle with these numbers scribed in it, I would want to save my rectangle on layer 0 and the numbers on layer 1 and bring it into a Um That's a simple breakdown of the layer setup. There's a little bit more to it, but if you guys have any more questions, feel free to call me. Um, that's pretty much the layer setup. When you go into materials here, this is where WeSim keeps up with all your materials and what you have in stock. If you ever want to add a material, say you have another piece of quarter inch plate, simply add it, give it a material name, and then it will give you some settings to plug in for width and dimensions and how much it weighs and that sort of thing. Another thing is, your opera under operations, you have a leads um, parameters. Under lead parameters, you have your settings for standard lead in arcs. And this is where you can go in and change where you want your position to show up on, or your lead positions to show up on parts, and what you actually like to use. Um, you can pick, you know, one one o'clock to twelve o'clock, all the way around the clock here, for where you want to show up. Um, split location. There's a little bit of definition to go into that. Um, I I usually always use always split. And most burner customers will, for the most part. I use arcs for everything. Um, and junction I use is exact. That means it's going to come in exactly on the line. Or on the curve, for instance. Then you have the same thing for lead in lines. Then you have lead setups. Here you can come in and say you have different setups for different materials. Say, for example, you use arcs for mostly circular cuts or you'd like to use just lines for square cuts or you don't want to use lead in or you don't want to use lead outs rather on certain parts but you do want to use lead ins here you can come in and set up another lead parameter and for this instance a lot of people set it up to say well, this is my lead for quarter inch plate all you do is come in here and say, okay, for my lead in, I'd like to have an arc. I don't want to lead out, so I'm going to leave it at none. And I want to use line, so my, all my arcs are going to be set to none. My arc. This will be a lead in. Arc. This will be a lead in arc. This will be a lead in arc. This would be a lead in arc. And that would be the basis of how you'd set that up. And this is completely variable for what you guys would like to do. So now that I've set up that lead parameter here, you can see when I come in to put lead ins on my parts, I now have standard, none, or my quarter inch plate. When I click apply, I have a completely different lead parameter, whereas my standard one just is a lead in with no lead out. So that's a quick idea of how you can change them. Um, you can see here my position on my leads is set up at 3 o'clock, so all my parts are going to have a lead in at 3 o'clock. Yet again, if you ever wanted to change that, just go in Configuration Manager, under Lead Parameters, and change your lead location. Click out of the field, close it off, and it will change your lead location. Um, that's a simple breakdown on lead ins and the Configuration Manager and a little bit on layer setups for you guys. I'll be looking forward to hearing from you. You know, we just we just got version 20 released. So I'm really excited about that. So yeah, looking forward to hearing from you guys. Give us a call if you're interested in anything. Thanks. Have a good afternoon.